mic right over there, and you can start lining up now. If you have a question, please keep it to one question per person, and no A, B, C, D, and X, Y, Z type questions. Just keep it to one thing. And uh, let's try to ask a question that the entire cast can answer, not pick out individuals, okay? It's gonna be a really fun panel. Let's all have fun and enjoy this thing. So if you're ready to get this thing started, say yeah! yeah. Say oh yeah! Oh, yeah. All right, let's get this thing going right now. Let's bring out the voice cast of Death Note. They're going to be hitting the stage right about now, starting with the voice of Light Yagami. Please make some noise for the one and only Brad Swell. The voice yo, of yo. L. Give it up for Alessandro Giuliani. And the voice of Ryuk makes some noise for Brian Drummond! <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome! <laughs> I didn't What's get the hoodie that? memo. We oh, got the memo. You guys look already. awesome. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Columbus. How are we feeling? Fabulous. How are you? Uh, I'm a little bit better than amazing, man. Feeling great. Feeling great. Great to be Beautiful. here with you guys. Awesome. So first time in Columbus or you've been here before? I was here a number of years ago for a convention, but quite a while, maybe seven, eight years ago. Cool, cool. One trip. First time. Beautiful city. Nice. Loving it. Loving it so far. Yeah, I've been here before, but it's been quite some time. Very so cool. It's good to be back. Awesome. I mean, uh, when was the last time you guys all got to get together? I know cons are a good way that you guys actually get to see each other in person as opposed to, you know, recording remotely and stuff like that. So, like, is this the first time you've been together in a long time? Uh, not too long. We've been on a little bit of a reunion tour since last November when we started doing these conventions as a package deal. Uh, so we've been to about a half a dozen this year all around the States and uh, a few more to come. Yeah. And we, when we recorded this show, we didn't do it remotely. So uh, there's right. most actors I haven't seen over the past three years because of COVID. We didn't get a lot of in-studio work. But when you do dubbing, you don't see a lot of the actors you work with at all because you just record your lines by yourself. Unless you pass on the way in and out, and you know, high five to light when he passes Ryuk on the way in and out of the studio or, or vice versa. But we don't see much of each other on this show. But on other shows, we've worked on... I've worked with Brad and, and AJ on a numerous other shows over the years, so once in a while, but we've seen a lot of each other the past six, seven months. But uh, to your We're starting to dress the same. It's, it's weird. Yeah, it's I was weird. Say, yeah. Yeah. We're practically a band now. Yeah. Um, Boy band. We're, we're missing our fourth right now. Shannon couldn't make it this weekend, but we did uh, discover, I think the first convention that we did together was the first time that all four of us had been in the same room at the same time. And we'd, we'd, you know, we'd hung out individually, whatever, uh, yeah. back in Vancouver, and we'd worked on several shows together, but we had never been in the same place all at the same time, because, like we're saying, you know, Death Note, they bring in um, one actor at a time for recording anime, so we had never actually shared the same space at the exact same time until yeah. we started doing these conventions, so yeah. Yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah, if she was here, would you think she'd have the same hoodie on as well? Oh, I wish she did, <laughs> but I don't know I don't know if they had a Misa one, but we could probably get it custom done. Somebody make one, quick. Yeah, pl quick, yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. That's why she's not here, because yeah. she didn't get the hoodie. So yeah, I'm not, hoodie, yeah. yeah, she didn't. She she said, didn't I'm not one. coming if you three go up with hoodies on, and I don't have one. Yeah, first Misa doesn't get a Funko Pop, and now no hoodie. Ridiculous. Yeah, come on, uh, I'm out. Not even cool. Well, thank you so much for being here. Obviously, we have a lot of your fans out here in the crowd, and again, that, that microphone is there if you want to start lining up now because we get a chance to answer, uh, ask some questions. But um, I guess I'll start here with uh, with you, Brad. Um, and I don't know how familiar everyone else was with the series before it came out, but I read that you actually were very well aware of the success of the show and you had uh, you felt a kind of pressure to succeed can you can you expand on that a little bit I mean it's true I knew of the show I hadn't watched the original Japanese um, but I knew of it and I knew that it was really popular in Japan and just the little that I did know about the show I knew that it was gonna hit really hard in North America because uh, for a lot of people it's it's different than what they would expect anime to be um, and and since doing these conventions I've had a lot of people come up to me and say that Death Note is the show that got them into watching anime. And to that, I say, you're welcome. I'm sorry. I don't know, because it is kind of a bit of a gateway drug, right? Uh, but it is, it's pretty special when you get to work on a show uh, that becomes so immediately popular. And we recorded this in, what, 2007, 2008? And the fact that we're still talking about it today with the same enthusiasm as we were back then is pretty incredible and, and kind of a, a 
wonderful thing to be able to. Slightly less enthusiasm because we're getting older, so yeah, it's true. the energy is yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, the show is, is super popular, and it's really surpassed its own success. I mean, it's even in memes everywhere. I see there's these videos online of uh, this guy, and he'll say, hey, can I draw your picture? And he'll draw their picture in the book, and then he'll slowly slam it shut, and it's Death Note, and the people were like, oh, no! <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really it's, it's popular. Everyone knows what Death Note is. Um, did, did you guys know about the show before it came out? I had no idea, and I, I didn't really even know much about anime when I um, got this gig to be this voice. So so there was no pressure in that way, but I, I did I did um, get to just sort of discover it in real time as we were shown the episodes before we would do the dub, and um, I was intrigued and and curious to explore more um, afterwards. Yeah, so it was a gateway for me, for sure. And for, uh, Alessandro, I know you uh, started voice acting when you were 11 or 12, um, yeah, and right. it kind of led up to this huge. So do you remember some of the first roles that you got to do as yeah, a voice actor? Yeah, for sure. The very first role I ever did, uh, there was actually a, someone who came to my table this weekend with a Kid Icarus Nintendo oh cartridge God, Icarus, from the original, oh the original first gen Nintendo. And there was a Saturday morning cartoon that came out at the same time as that console called Captain N. The, the Game, Game Master. Master. Yes! <laughs> and uh, I happened to be 12 or 11 or something, and and my voice sounded a little bit like this anyway. It was sort of like, no. Nah. And so it was, I didn't have to really put on a voice. I had to put on like a Brooklyn accent a little bit. Um, but I had this squeaky voice break, and I just happened to get that job, and it was a blast. That's, I and didn't know that, and that was one of my favorite shows really? growing up. I, you know, um, cosplay as Captain N. My, wow. my, my profile photo is me in the Captain N varsity jacket. Like, that's <laughs> awesome that you did that. Yeah, that was very, my, very that cool, was man. my first first professional job. Awesome. And Brian, let's uh, let's jump on down to you, man. Um, You, uh, where's my note here? You're the voice of Vegeta as well in the ocean dub of of Dragon Ball. That's so cool. Yeah, my very first um, anime gig, not first gig gig, but uh, I graduated theater school in the early 90s, 91, and was doing film and TV and theater, all that stuff, trying to make a buck. And as a performer, you're, you want to, you know, have your fingers in as many pies as possible and trying to, to keep the, to keep the game going. And um, uh, voiceover industry was just starting to really explode in Vancouver in the early 90s. Lots of shows from the, from He-Man and uh, and uh, Beast Machines and uh, GI Joes. All that stuff was happening. Uh, a reboot. It was all just sort of really starting to take off. And I told my agent, I want to do this some of this voice stuff. And he was confused. He thought I wanted to be a DJ or something. And I'm like <laughs> a radio DJ. And I'm like, no, I just like for cartoons and things like that. And um, he sent me out for an audition. I think they were replacing uh, Bob on Reboot, and uh, I auditioned for that, which I did not get my very first. But my next audition, I landed a lead on a G.I. Joe series and had a blast. You, you couldn't have a better director to start with. It was Sue Blue, who has done so much directing and all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like She was a, a, a god of voice direction, and she I was thrown into the fire with her and loved it. And my, my very next audition was for this weird thing called Anime which I didn't know what it was either. Some strange, they said he was a diminutive alien creature with superpowers and a bad attitude. He had a big ego, but he was a killer as well. And but he, and he was a prince of his own planet named after him. I'm like, what? Okay, but then no picture. So I pitched a high-voiced, egotistical-sounding alien that had a voice like this, and they picked it for this random guy named Vegeta. And who would know that it moved on to where it was? The show did move from Vancouver. I did all of Dra- uh, Dragon Ball Z that was seen in Canada and the UK and Ireland and some of Europe. But um, partway through the Frieza saga, the producers moved to, to save a buck, I think, and do it out of Dallas instead of Vancouver. But this meme, I apologize, like Brad did, for for making it what it is, and it's all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really cool to see. There's quite the debate to see, like, who does the better Vegeta, Chris Sabat or you? And it's actually very positive in both directions. I, I, I love the other. Chris 
to bits. He's a great guy. So I, and, wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask you what it was like to be brought back to voice Vegeta versus Vegeta in yes, Dragon Ball Super. copy Vegeta. Well, Chris and I keep in touch sometimes, and he's, he's so he's got my my uh, text, and he threw me a text, and he's like, hey, Drummond, there's this part coming up in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, maybe you might be interested. And I was like, eh, you know, I'm the original Vegeta. It might be weird to play some other new bad guy or something like that. I'm in Vancouver. He's in Dallas, so there's union issues and stuff to do because Texas is non-union. Vancouver, we are, where we are, is union, so you don't cross that line too much. But um, he said, well, uh, 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 I'll talk to Funimation, but it could be something interesting. And when he told me it was another Vegeta that he wanted to do in a scene with him as his Vegeta, I thought this would be amazing sort of fan service little bit that they would just love. So yeah. we found a way to make it wor uh, work it was, out, and we put it together. It yeah. really was such an awesome like, meta moment. Yeah, for exactly. Because I was the role, and he had to copy my voice to get the role, and then years down the road, I had to play copy Vegeta that copied him doing Vegeta. So it was, it was inception, inception of Vegeta. Yeah, exactly. I loved it. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, um, I know we have all the Death Note fans here, and I definitely want to get into some more questions about Death Note. And for that, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to the audience. Once Woo. again, please keep it to one question per person. Step on up to the mic. What's your name? And what's your question? Hi, I'm Madison. I hope you're having a good day. Yes. So basically, I have a friend in the audience that has never seen Death Note, and I was wondering if you could do like a 30 second just like re recap of what the show is for him <laughs> Without spoilers. with no spoilers honestly he said he's fine with spoilers he's never gonna watch it i don't know <laughs> okay <laughs> Oh, he might. That's tricky. Just to get them to watch it? Yeah, honestly, I really want him to watch it, and he's like, I'll get to it eventually, but, you know. How do you do <laughs> Maybe that? Maybe this will entice him. <laughs> All right. Guy finds book. Yeah. I'm a good student. Hey, look, a notebook. I will be god of the new world. <laughs> Pretty accurate. <laughs> Anybody want some cake? <laughs> I'm the coolest looking death god ever. <laughs> and he loves apples. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> Watch it. Thank you. <laughs> How could you not watch that? I yeah, mean, that's watch like... It. Watch it. That's pretty spot on. All right. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Olivia. And my question is, if you didn't voice your character in Death Note, who would you have liked to voice? Misa. <laughs> but she's got such a beautiful singing voice, I had no chance. So do yeah. you, Brad. Thank yeah, you. Come on, Brad. Let's hear uh, it. I, 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 always, I like Matsuda. I just think he's goofy and fun, and it would have been fun to voice him. Uh, you know, if I think what's suitable for me, it's sort of different. I probably would have, would have played, um, I know I originally auditioned for Light's dad, which is also a great character. Um, it would have been a nice role to play, but really, um, L is a pretty sweet role. Come on. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to be L in Death Note? A lot of people. And that's including me, but I just, my voice is too creepy for that role. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi, what's your name and what's your question? My name is Anna, and I w wonder if you actually could have the Death Note, would you use it? No. No. I've seen the show. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would pick it up, read the front, oh, Death Note? No. Well, there you go. Death no. Is this book sewn from the skin of humans? No, I'm not going <laughs> to use it. All right. Hi. What's your name and what's your question? My name is Juliet, and I have kind of a wordy question. What is your favorite line from a different Death Note character, and can you do it in your character's voice? Wow. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> I'll have a chip and eat it. <laughs> To think about that. Humans are so interesting. <laughs> I can't remember the full line, but um, let's see. I've heard the way you do not gain weight is to exercise your mind. <laughs> 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 Give me cake. <laughs> so creepy. Right, thank you so much. All right, thank you for your question. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Um, my name is Lil, and my 
question is, do any of you not like the character you voice as? No, I love my character. In this show or just ever? Ever. Oh. Has oh. there ever been a character you didn't like voicing as? Uh, there's parts of characters I didn't like voicing. The fight sequences for Dragon Ball Z are brutal. I don't think there's probably a voice actor that says, I love it when there's a four episode arc of me screaming. <laughs> Yeah. No voice actor says, yes, my favorite part. I love speaking as Vegeta. I do not like screaming as him. It is uh, it is rough. Yeah, screaming is hard, I guess. <laughs> uh, any video game voice that I've ever done always involves doing like a two-hour walla library of screaming and dying in various terrible ways. And so that's probably the only time I've cursed a role that I've gotten. It's actually a good point, because in, in hindsight, I love pretty much every character that I've been lucky enough to voice. But at the time, so I played Gohan in the original Ocean Dub of Dragon Ball Z. So same thing, where you're screaming for episode after episode after episode. And you have this gigantor scream that then cuts to commercial and comes back, and he's still screaming. So you've been screaming for 30-plus <laughs> seconds, and naturally, ah! you start to drop a little bit, and they go, cut. Because we're going to go to commercial, come back, and he's still going to be screaming. So you have to do it again, and do not let your voice go down at all. Now, there was a, a video game that I was lucky enough to work on called Street Fighter vs. Tekken. Um, and I got to play Jin in that, so awesome. But for that one, because I'm in Canada, and it was recorded in Los Angeles, I flew myself to Los Angeles, and I only had like not even a full day to record the entire video game. So that one beat me up. And in hindsight, incredible role, very fortunate. At the time, I was dying. Um, so yeah, good and bad. Screaming. Screaming. Stink. Lots of screaming. <laughs> All right. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Aiden, and uh, I was like wondering, how is it to like see younger generations get interested into the show? Because I know that I was born around the time the show came out. Oh, God. So is it like weird? Is it weird or is it more like, oh, that's nice? It's pretty great, I think. Whenever there's a new generation that finds something that you've done in the past, and it's still relevant is fabulous. So, I mean, this show was really big when it came out in 2009 or so. It would, took off. Was We were doing convention stuff then. And then there's a bit of a lull. We were working on lots of other projects. But then it dropped on Netflix kind of during COVID. They picked it up. And all of a sudden, a whole new group of people had the opportunity to see it. And some people, young, younger people like yourself, um, are now coming up to it saying, it was the first anime I watched. I saw it on Netflix or wherever it, where it showed up. And it's great. Great. I, I love that a show can, can be relevant um, throughout through many generations. So maybe there'll be another round, and there'll be you'll be you'll remember. I remember when I watched it in 2022, and it'll be 2040, and some kid you run into. Whoa, man! I just watched that. It's so cool. <laughs> and in, in doing these conventions, I've discovered that there's a lot of families that are watching Death Note together. Yeah. So it might be people that were younger when it first came out, and now they have kids that are aging up to a point where they're watching watching the series together. And there's not a lot of shows that I can think of that I've worked on that can cross generations that easily. But there's just something about Death Note. Such a great yeah. family show, yeah. Paw Patrol, <laughs> Death Note. <you> know. <laughs> Death Note, yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's a crossover. It's Paw a cross Patrol, Death Note. I Paw like Note. And I imagine there are certain families where there's you know, not a whole lot that the parents have in common with their kids. But if they can find a show like Death Note that they can watch and enjoy and discuss together, and it's not fluff. So they can have ethical and moral debates and you know, this character versus this character and all that kind of stuff. And you know, these might be people that, depending on the age of the kids, don't really talk to each other that often. They're more roommates than they are family. But then they get around the, the boob tube to watch Death Note and suddenly their best pals. They can so all cry together when no. Elle dies. <laughs> <laughs> or Sorry. laugh. Sorry. <laughs> the... Yeah, ultimately, it's, it's why we do this is to ho we hopefully are going are gonna to be in a show that brings people closer together, that reflects something about humanity that resonates with lots of people. So the fact that it has this kind of shelf life is incredible. It's a unicorn. For every death note that we're a part of, there's dozens of shows uh, Go nowhere. That, that, yeah, some of which we are, you know, feel like, oh, this one's going to be, a, you know, big hit or this is going to be great. And they just go out into the world and Keep going. nobody cares. <laughs> so the fact that you all care means everything. It's the best. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, I'm Sal. I was 
was wondering, um, what is y'all's take on the um, Simpsons Treehouse of Horror parody? <laughs> ah, good that's one. amazing. Yeah, that's another way that like the show lives on. Somebody in the writer's room of The Simpsons or one of the animators was a fan of Death Note and brought that to the table. And when there's those kind of like crossovers and concentric circles between universes, it's like incredible. It's that's a show that I watched when I was you know young, and now it's referencing something that I did uh, even indirectly. I thought they knocked it out of the park with that too. The, the whole yeah. look of it was fantastic, and it was so great. Yeah, the even the fact that we recorded this sh series so so long ago, and it was just last Halloween that it became referenced uh, through Simpsons, kind of speaks to the longevity of the show and the relevance today. And the fact that it was treated that bit was treated with so much care and attention, um, just gave me the the warm and fuzzies all over, knowing that Simpsons did it. Uh, and they did it right, so it was awesome. Yeah. We're not going to say everybody does everything right that takes the Death Note anime and tries to make something else with it. <coughs> Death, uh, Death Note movie. <coughs> Netflix. <coughs> Ouch. All right, hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Patrick, and my question was, if you had to pick any other character that you voiced throughout your whole career and put them in Death Note, which one would you pick? <laughs> Like oh, awesome this would be a great one, because he's my favorite character. I got to play him in five uh, movies. And would the Death Note work on him? Wolverine, uh, could you put his name in the Death Note and actually yeah. kill him or not? Oh. Isn't he, he Interesting. Be, how would he die? You, no matter what you put, wrote in there, and huh. he'd die, he wouldn't die. Huh. It would be so frustrating for Ryuk and Light. I just... Uh, <laughs> See, that's actually a really good answer. Deadpool? My I think that Kid Icarus would be a good Shinigami. <laughs> <laughs> he already flies around, you know, sort of unconventional. Right, very unassuming. It's a kid. Comic no relief. Yeah. 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 There's the, the first character that popped into my head is is from uh, it's an anime series that I worked on, and the character already carries a book around, so it's Maxwell from Hamtaro. <laughs> The only one who can create a new world <laughs> is me. <laughs> yes, Maxwell. Yeah. Uh, All right, yeah. I want to see that mashup now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hi. What's your name and what's your question? Hi. My name is Mitchell, and uh, I, I could ask a million questions, but I guess uh, I just want to say thank you for being here, and I love that you also have a potato chip bag next to you, <laughs> based on the. <laughs> I'm a method actor. <laughs> but um, I guess uh, uh, Brian already kind of mentioned it, but uh, I wanted to know your reactions to the live-action movie. Like I know, so like I have a mixed reaction in that I really liked that they cast. Um, Willem Dafoe as Ryuk, but then when I realized that he was going to be CGI and not Willem Dafoe, I was like, well, they should have just had you do it. <laughs> but I just... Yeah, it was partial CG and, and a dude in a suit as well, uh, doing quite a bit of it. And I thought he was great casting, too. That was the first casting that I heard about the show. I was like, yeah, this might be great, because he's got a great voice, he's got a great look, but I don't think he was ever in the suit. I don't believe so. He was... I don't know if he was ever spent a day on set. I'm not sure. He might have just done the voice from studio. But but um, I just don't feel they, they, they caught the vibe of this show. It's not, I watched it, and it's not what it was to me when I made it and what the, what the anime is, what the manga is. It just seemed to be like, did you guys even watch the series? It was almost like they didn't, and it was like, no, we don't want to see it. We want to do our own thing. Here's the premise. Uh, this note falls to earth, and they made their own story up with the same characters. I don't know. It just seemed off to me. I hope the Duffer brothers do a better job with it. Yeah, it's sort of a testament to the strange alchemy of what we do that it didn't work because it had great people involved, great cast who have all been like excellent in other roles, right? From Lakeith Stanfield to every, you know, Margaret Qualley, all of them, right? Um, a great premise. 
Um, but I only made it through like 20 minutes of it. I was like, oh, I can't. I just, no, I can't. Because um, just if something wasn't hitting. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, now, I still haven't seen it. And the main reason is because every time I say, oh, I still have to watch that, people say, don't. <laughs> I'm like, well, I have to. Don't. But I will say, um, if you do want to watch a live action version of Death Note, there's some uh, original Japanese live action movies. And there's a series of them. There's at least three or four. Um, and those are actually quite good. Now, we were also lucky enough to provide the English voice tracks for those movies, too. And they did, a, at the time, they did a limited theatrical release of those films. Um, so some of us from the cast actually went and watched these things in the theater. And I was delightfully surprised at how well it worked. Because I grew up watching really horribly dubbed Jackie Chan kung fu movies. And I was afraid that we were going to make Death Note that. But it seemed like everybody kind of dialed back their performance to fit with the live action genre, and it worked pretty well. So if you can find those movies, those ones are worth checking out. Yeah, we dubbed them, so it's, it's our voices in the same characters. Did you guys know about the Death Note uh, remake from Netflix? Did anyone reach out to you guys to be a no. part of it? No? Not until it appeared online that they're making it, and I think Willem Dafoe as a voice was one of the first people listed. Okay. That's, that's all I We take so. no responsibility. No, or, I, would, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> all right, thank you. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Uh, my name's Samuel, and besides the uh, anime you guys have voiced over, what's an anime you like to watch in your spare time? Besides the anime that we've done, well, um, I haven't watched mountains of anime like all of you, but my, my favorite one that I actually can sit down and, um, and have seen most of it, I'm not, I seen, haven't seen all of it yet, is Attack on Titan. That's a, that's a great series that I really like. Uh, for me, uh, I have younger kids, so they're not quite of an anime age yet, but they'll get there soon. And we've sort of introduced a little bit with the Studio Ghibli stuff, like Totoro and and Kiki and all that stuff. And I love those. Uh, when I was younger, I watched Mononoke. And um, going even further back, like Akira was the first one that kind of came out in the movie theaters when I was young. I remember going to see that and it blowing my mind. So. Um, yeah, that's my kind of exposure to it these days. <laughs> Same with me. The, the first anime, anything that I sourced out on my own, and this was like early high school, was Akira. And it completely blew my mind. Uh, I had no idea that animation could look like that or do the things that happen in that movie. Um, so that's one that actually I've been thinking about more and more recently is something that I have to go they back to. They weren't even using again. the word anime at that time, though. This was just, I don't think I ever heard that word until about the mid-90s. And I know I saw here as well, and they weren't saying, this new anime movie, it wasn't what it was, it was just a feature animated movie from Japan that was incredible. That's, I didn't know anime like was a word. All I had uh, seen as far as like feature length animated shows was probably Disney stuff. So at that time, it was, you know, Little Mermaid and things like that. And then this show, you know, very different. <laughs> there was no singing, there were, there were no, you know, floundering animals and stuff like that. It was carnage and mutations and awesome Awesomeness. It was a different time as well. It wasn't as accessible or easy to find. You had to know someone who had the VHS yeah, of the yeah. tape, or they, rec you know, what I mean, like uh, Ninja Scroll was the first one I ever saw, and that one just yeah. blew my mind. The, the the very first anime anything that I worked on was a show called Ranma One Half, which is a classic and used to be like everybody knew Ranma, and it seems like it's it's kind of harder to get a hold of now, so fewer and fewer people know about it, which is really unfortunate because it was as far as I can tell it was the first you know long format anime series that was huge in North America but to your point if you wanted to watch it you had to send like a check to some PO box somewhere and in three months you'd get one videotape that had like two episodes on it and then three months later you'd get another videotape that had the next two episodes on it so it was it was trickier to get a hold of and that's really what I think kind of solidified the idea of anime fandom is if you wanted it, you had to work for it. It was, in, it was insane. I was an anime club in college, and yeah, again, it's like you had to know somebody who owned it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Hi. Good question. Thank you for your question. What's your name and what's your question? My name's Joe, and I wanted to know what your, like, while recording Death Note, what was the line for each of you that you kept messing up on to the point where it's like, I messed it up. 
and get them. Wow, that's, you know, you're making us try to remember 2008. <laughs> what were you doing in 2008 that you can remember? <laughs> good. That's I mean, a good question, though. It, it, I, yeah, it's really hard to be too specific, but I do remember at a certain point when it became clear that L would be eating his way through the show, I would bring food in, like pastries and stuff. There was a bakery around the corner. So undoubtedly, there were retakes because I had, you know, stumbled over a, a croissant or a, a <laughs> tart, you know, the, in my mouth. I'm sure that was the case. I don't remember a specific dessert that impeded my performance, but there you go. <laughs> Well, since you're going in that direction and talking about food re retakes, yeah, I do remember. So for the last episode, there's a scene where Light's taking a nice gentle stroll down the boulevard, chain link fence in the background. He's full of holes and le <laughs> leaking profusely. And so I knew this scene was coming up. So I brought an interesting collection of beverages into the studio with me. Something you never do is bring chocolate milk and like a very tart, citrusy fruit cocktail beverage. And I combined them in my mouth and then recorded that scene so it could be as disgusting as possible. And I was so happy with how it turned out. It was revolting. Like, I think the engineer was dry heaving a little bit at some point during my <laughs> performance. And so I went away and then came back like a week or two later because I had, uh, I, I'd, you know, redo some dialogue or they had changed some lines or whatever. And we had to redo that particular scene because they told me this was their note. It's just way too disgusting. <laughs> So, yeah. So, uh, again, something you wouldn't normally do in a session is mix chocolate milk and, like, fruit punch and then try and record. Um, and turns out you still don't do that, even if, you, even if it gets the results that me as an actor maybe want. Everybody else was too grossed out by it, so we redid it and toned it down a little bit. Yeah, there's probably going to retakes involved in eating and talking at the same time happens with probably all of us. Thanks. Good question. Thanks for your question. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Xavier, and if you could give Vegeta the death note, would you? <laughs> if I could give Vegeta the death note, would I? <laughs> well, it really depends on what episode you want to give it to him. If you gave it to him when I was playing him, uh, when he first rolled into Earth, that would be a big mistake, probably. That would be a serious mistake, because he was a bad, bad man, as noted by the pink shirt he wore with bad man on the back. But yeah, he would not have done uh, good by anybody. I'm sure um, uh, Kakarot would be in another dimension quite quickly as he scribbled his name into the notebook. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't give it to him. It would have ended the series really early. Thank you. All right, awesome. Thanks for your question. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? My name is Anthony, and uh, I just want to know how many um, death notes have you had at, like autograph? <laughs> Good question. Over 9,000! Woo! So many. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's I, a lot. We've killed ourselves over and over and over again. <laughs> we just keep coming back. Maybe we are Wolverine. It's possible. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it works because we do a lot on the cover. Maybe that's what's keeping us okay. safe. My signature doesn't spell out my entire name, so I always feel a little safe. It's just jumbly scribbles. No one would know who to harm there. But uh, even when someone asks me to put their entire name in the death note, something about me is just like, really? You know, the whole thing? So I, I remember putting their whole name, except the last letter, I kind of made it look like it could be numerous letters and didn't really finish. I'm like, I can't do it. I don't want it jinx your life. <laughs> that reminds me, this is a stupid story, but like I'm not a superstitious guy for the most part, but we were still recording Death Note, and then I got invited to a convention, and so I, I showed up, and we were doing autographs, and somebody brought a Death Note, and I was like, oh, no way, I'm loving the show, it's amazing, you, you want me to sign it? Yeah, I'd love to, and then, I, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> I don't want to put my name in the death note, but I don't want to disappoint this person. And then I started seeing like a headline in my head of like, you know, anime voice actor mysteriously, you know, perishes before finishing recording on death note series. I'm like, oh no, I don't want to be that headline. So I signed a fake name. Like I, I signed most of my name, but I signed like braggadocio swaler. And then I, and then I kind of crossed out some of the letters and like, it's kind of my name. And I did that for the entire week 
weekend, and it wasn't until we finished the last episode, we, we recorded, it was wrapped, then I went to another convention, and I'm like, now I can officially sign my name. My work is done, so it's okay. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. But there was just a moment of like panic in my face. Oh, no! I can't do this. So 32 Italian braggadocios, swales, died that weekend. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I finished the series. So we finished Brad, finished win -win. the series, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for your question. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hello. My name is Hunter. Um, I think Death Note is a very quotable show. Um, so I'm wondering, what was your favorite quote to record? Wow. Very quotable show. Favorite quote to record. It's funny, because when you're doing a show, um, there's tons of dialogue that you have, and none of them feel like quotes when you're first doing it, because it hasn't gone out yet for people to see, and quotes, the quotable aspect is created by the fandom, so it's after the fact, so I wouldn't probably be able to answer what it was the favorite one to record was quotable, because I'm not thinking about it at the time, but now there's a lot of quotes that have sort of solidified as favorites for me, and um, uh, probably my, the one that makes me reminds me the most of Ryu because he was just such an overseer of everything and he was a bored death god is always humans are so interesting <laughs> because they just are for this lonely bored death god <laughs> I would say um, uh, a, a line or a quote that I remember recording anyway mm -hmm. at the time. I remember watching it and to, to do the dub and thinking, wow, this is a really cool moment, is the moment um, in, early on when they first meet, Light and L meet, and there's that great episode where all of a sudden they're kind of in a college dorm movie or something mm -hmm. for a while, like a buddy comedy. Um, he he turns to Light and says, I want to tell you, I'm hell. And the animation gets really cool for a moment and goes all sort of blue. And it's a really stylized moment. It was kind of the, one of the first of those moments, animation-wise. So I remember recording and being like, OK, I really got to nail this. This is going to be cool. And we ended up going to this whisper kind of in the reveal, which I think worked out well. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're all hungry. Got it. <laughs> oh, past the I'll chip. take a potato chip and eat it. Yeah. So and yeah. eat it. Now, speaking of talking with food in your mouth or recording with food in your mouth, it's about to happen. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. At the time, I thought that was an interesting line, a cool little scene. I'm like, well, I don't know why we freeze frame on a chip and why there's like <laughs> fireworks and stuff, but <laughs> and then I moved on. But it wasn't until afterwards where I've gotten so many free potato chips out of this deal. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It's definitely my favorite line of all time because I love potato chips. So thank you. <laughs> What's your favorite chip if you had to choose? It's easier, okay, it's like asking what's your favorite child. You're not supposed to answer that question. And I'm a big fan of potato chips. I'm yeah. almost like a connoisseur. Connoisseur, yeah. indeed. You know, I, I, I love my potato chips. It's almost easier to list the ones that I don't like. Um, so my top three, let's say, sour cream and onion, barbecue, even a good old fashioned, you know, regular or whatever. The ones I try and stay away from are salt and vinegar. Not for me. A lot of people, aw. Yeah. <laughs> Poor salt too, and vinegar. Too, too much for me. But yeah, I'm a fan of chips. Dill pickle. Ooh, ketchup. Mm, I'm Canadian. Mm, I love ooh, a ketchup very Canadian chip. answer. Yeah. Yeah. You guys don't get ketchup chips down here. Oh, so good. Your loss. Yeah. I used to eat ketchup chips all the time. Oh, I'm yeah. up from up in New York, and they had them yeah, all the time. Yeah. Further, for, closer you get to the border, that's where they start appearing. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Fire away. Hi, what's your name, and what's your question? Um, I'm Sophia, and my question is, if you had to change the ending of Death Note, like, what would you change it to, and like, what would the effect be of that? What would I change it to, you know? There's some fandom that it could possibly happen, but if somehow Ryuk had the way to still write Light's name in the book, but somehow Light was able to join him in the death realm and become a death god and continue the series, that would be cool. Oh, wow. I would uh, write that L doesn't die, I think. <laughs> 
I don't think I'd be alone in that sentiment. <laughs> Uh, I'm with Brian on this one. I, I like the idea, and it is still like an idea that gets kicked around that, you know, once Light uses the Death Note, he can no longer go to heaven or hell, so where does he end up? Shinigami Realm. Yeah. And I want to see Shinigami Light. Yeah. And it'd be cool to have a reunion of these three characters if we have Shinigami Light with Shinigami Ryug, and then L comes in there to facilitate um, the boy band that we become, or the yeah. takeover of the world, or the, you know, it could be like, you know, a a tag team wrestling duo with a you know loudmouth manager sitting like around that. in a circle. I can see them. See, I told you it's boring up here. Yeah. Let's go do some crazy stuff, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for your question. All right. Hi. What's your name and what's your question? Hi. I'm Patty. I'm okay. old. Um, I'm not so your typical we. anime follower, but I come for my daughter. Everywhere. Nice. Um, anyway, uh, my question is: is we all come to prepare for this? thing, this, um, the cons and, and the panels, and you've not really voiced the characters on a regular basis for this many years, how are you able to, what do you all do for pre preparation to come here to do these where you can kind of really sound it exactly like them, number one, or like even, you know, I knew you were struggling remembering some of the <laughs> things you're asking, I get it, but um, but how, how do you prepare for that? Do you guys meet together and kind of watch pieces and parts of it together so you can come up with the voice again exactly how it was 15 years ago? Like, I don't, I don't know how you prepare for this. I, I just watched it again uh, before we started coming to these conventions last November. Um, I hadn't watched it in a long time. Um, so I watched it again, and I mean, the nice thing about Elle is that it is not that different from my own voice. I just have to get a little quieter and a little more articulate and intelligent sounding. That's about it. He, yeah, it's kind of like... Um, it's, this is just an instrument, the, the voice, and it's one most of us have played this instrument for a really long time. So it's kind of like that, I can imagine, with any, uh, if you're a guitarist or a drummer or whatever it may be, when you played an, a song for a number of years over a certain period of time, if someone told you, hey, yeah, go grab your guitar, remember when you used to play, you know, Raise a Little Hell or whatever, you know, I don't know, and you, you pick it up, it's like, oh yeah, it comes back pretty quick. Because it's not like we stopped playing instruments at all, we still just been playing a lot of other songs with them and then we're reminded of that one and you're right sometimes it takes a little just watch it again oh that's kind of where it was yeah yeah I get how it goes and then it comes back and of course going to cons on the regular um, if you're doing a few of them then it's it's right there quite quickly it doesn't disappear very fast so the more you do it the more it comes back but it does take a little refresher like like AJ said we've also you know between the three of us we've worked on several different productions over the years so there's no way that we could brush up on every role that we've done on every series. So we do also rely fairly heavily on um, people like you that attend these conventions. You know, we might kind of remember the intention behind a character or the voice of a specific character or whatever, but if there's particular dialogue and lines we might fumble over, we let you guys kind of guide us through that process a little bit too. And you're all very patient with us, so <laughs> we appreciate it. And they aren't, they aren't always right there at the, at, the, at the top of your head. I remember I was at a convention um, a number of months ago and someone brought a, uh, uh, I think it was a, a VHS of, of Monster Rancher. I don't know if any, anyone remembers that series, but I played this character called Tiger of the Wind on Monster Rancher and someone said, oh, you played this, can you sign it? Can you do one of his lines? I didn't really remember one and, and they told me one that he said and I, I had to think quick, what did Tiger of the Wind sound like? And I thought I kind of remembered and I said the line and they looked at me and like, it's actually, it's a, he's a little deeper than that. And then he was kind of guiding me through it. No, a little bit. Yeah, that's where it was. <laughs> so the fan was, was telling me what he sounded like. I'm like, thanks. Thanks for helping me out there. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea that you said that it was like, uh, almost like uh, not forgetting a song. You yeah. know what I mean? And that, that makes, like, it's crystal clear sense. And we do have, like, when we go into sessions, like, depending on the show, sometimes it's quite a bit of, of a break between, you know, episodes or between batches or whatever. So there's usually one line either from the audition or from the 
the early episodes that they've kind of kept and put aside as far as the engineering goes. And then they'll be like, okay, so we're gonna play your voice reference. And it'll be that one line. So sometimes you'll hear a character's name and you automatically have that one line that pops into your head. So you, you know, almost like a tick, you scream that out loud. Then you're like, okay, that's what that character sounded like. I remember now. Yeah. yeah. Good question, thanks. That's interesting. All right, so I'm gonna play bad guy here for just a moment. We are coming down to the last few moments of this panel. So if we could try to uh, rapid fire through these questions as quick as possible, <laughs> and please note new additions to the line. So hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name's Sam, and my question is that, uh, uh, so when you started to develop the voice is for your characters, did you at one time have another alternative that you started with that, that you know, that you changed to where you, where it is now. Uh, if you did an alternative at one point, would you be willing to share it? You yeah. know how the character could have sounded. That's a good question. That does happen on shows sometimes. Sometimes you might get a few episodes in um, on a show you've been recording, and then once they put the whole mix together with all the rest of the cast, and it gets sent back to the producers on the show or someone a little further up the chain, they're like, eh, it's kind of, this guy's sounding a bit too close to that. Can we deepen that one a little bit? And they'll ask to change it up, and you have to go back and re-record some stuff and redo some some scenes. I don't remember that at all with this, with, um, with Death Note. That didn't happen for Ryuk. Once we set the voice, it pretty much stayed there from off the top and, and didn't go anywhere for me on this show. But that does happen on shows where you have to kind of make adjustments as uh, early on in a show. Yeah, not on this one. We found our lane really early and we stayed in it. Yeah, I mean, my voice wasn't all that different from my regular voice anyway. And when it got into the more maniacal parts of it, like the craziness and the maniacal laughter. Then it was like really that, close to your real voice. Yeah. yeah, then it was right in my wheelhouse. But they just <laughs> basically kind of let me go nuts. And I treated this series like it was free therapy for me. Um, and they really embraced that and just kind of let me do my thing. So, no, it was it was kind of, it kind of was what it was. <laughs> That's it. It's our terrible version of rapid fire. Thank you. We'll get the next All question. All right, thank you. <laughs> One word answers from now on, I promise. Yeah, we might have enough room for at least two more questions, so I apologize for anybody we'll who doesn't fast. get to ask. All right, hey, what's your name? What's your question? Hi, I'm Denver, and if you could choose like a soundtrack, like a little anthem for each of your characters, what song would it be? Oh, good one. Raise a little hell? I don't know. Something by Joy Division. My favorite band's Tool, so anything by Tool would, would do just well. But you know, Maximum the Hormone provided some interesting music for the series. I would gladly take one of their tracks also. <laughs> Thanks. All right, cool, thank you. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi there, I'm Sydney, and I was just wondering, you know, there's a lot of separation between canon and head canon, so you guys played with the characters for uh, longer than, like more in depth than any of us did because you guys played them. So I was just wondering what are the head cannons that you guys kind of came up with while getting to know these characters? What are the what's a head cannon? What's a head cannon? Yeah. <laughs> A head cannon is basically something that you come up with yourself that isn't necessarily shown in right. the like canon show. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys answer this one first. I'm still wrapping my head around head cannon. Yeah, stuff that we came up with that wasn't canon that became. The yeah, like a, or like like an L like baking show. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I specifically, because I didn't know, we didn't know the show from beginning to end or the manga before we started, it's not like I knew what I would have been changing or manipulating for my, my character. Um, you know, it's, it, that's a really good one. That's a great one. I think all, all that I feel like I pushed maybe further than sometimes it could have gone was the craziness when he, uh, when he was, when he was uh, wigging out about needing to have the apples. I think I might have pushed that a little further that it's become kind of meme-worthy almost, but it might have been in the Japanese as well. Too. Shinigami Idol with Shinigami. you and Rem doing Islands in the Stream as a duet. <laughs> Yeah, we did that on the side. <laughs> Good question, but I think my big contribution completely failed. It was the chocolate milk and fruit punch, and it got cut, so. Yeah. You're fine. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. As quick as you can. Hi, what's your name? What's All your right, question? I'm, hi, I'm Sam. Very nice to meet you. Um, I was wondering, what's like one of the funniest stories you guys have, like while recording or in a con or anything like that? I just want to know. Uh, funniest stories recording. Uh, wow. Those are always, 
this isn't really funny, but like the last episode of Death Note, um, where there's the maniacal laughter and all that kind of stuff, I was over prepared for that episode. So I recorded the laugh. They were very happy. They're like, all right, Brad, let's move on. Let me just try it again. Because I had watched the original Japanese like four or five times, which I don't normally do. I don't want to oversaturate my brain with the original Japanese, but in this instance I did because I was terrified. Um, so they let me record the laugh probably four or five times. And then the problem with that is when you give them that many options, they choose whatever they want. And the one that they picked has like an accidental like horse whinny in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I get to do for all time now. Oh, God. Anything Good. else? Yeah, I, I can't think of a, a crazy thing. There's so much stuff that happens. Gas is always hilarious in the studio when someone does that whenever, when you're in a group recording session. It's not funny when you're dubbing because you're in the studio alone by yourself. It's a terrible thing to have happen. But when it's a group good laughs. You got to be on a show with Vincent Tong to have some of the most fun of your life. Get him to a convention. He's an amazing guy. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Matt, um, I, I feel bad to have to say it, but we are, we are officially out of time. If you did not get to ask your question, um, you're going to be here all weekend. They can still come and see yeah, you at your table, right your table, ask you a question, come we'll to the table, come say hi. Um, but with that said, uh, before we leave, is there anything that we can look forward to that you can actually speak about that's coming up that we can look forward to seeing you in or hearing you in? Oh. Yes, there's a number of shows. Actually, both uh, AJ and I are in a, a new uh, Lego series called Lego Dreams, which has just come out. Um, which is pretty wild. There's Lego Ninjago, which I'm a part of, which has just been released. And the second season uh, for me of Sonic Prime, where I play Eggman, comes out in about six days, I think. The second season, third season will be November or so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't really talk about anything other than what Brian has mentioned already, this new Lego show. Um, but, you know, I'll be around. He's everywhere. Cool. Yeah, there's not not near as much anime recording in Vancouver um, right now as there used to be. Um, so I'm working mostly on kid shows, um, pre lace series and stuff, but I'm not allowed to talk about any of those just yet. So yeah. Oh, go. one that should show up in the in the U.S. at sometime soon is Dragon Quest: Adventures of Dai. Same guys that worked on uh, Dragon Ball Z, very similar stuff. So if you liked all the screaming and craziness that I did in Dragon Ball and want to hear a whole lot of that, I play a couple of great bad guys, and that should be, I hope, releasing in North America this year. It's already released a number of episodes in Britain for some crazy reason, but it's going to be, a, I'm sure, a North American release soon. We did a hundred episodes of that bad boy. Awesome. Well, I know we're all looking forward to seeing what's coming up next, but thank you guys so much for being here. Thank One big you. round of applause, of course, the cast of Death Note, Brad Swale, Alessandro Giuliani, and Brian Drummond.